My name is Mike Stratton and I'm director of the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. Sanger Institute is the United Kingdom's genome centre. It was established in order to get the DNA sequences of a range of genomes starting from bacteria up to the human genome itself, of which it contributed about a third. There have been enormous changes in DNA sequencing. Compared to about 12 years ago, we can sequence a million times as much DNA in the same time as in the same cost. So that's a transformational shift in technology which has allowed us to explore genomes in a way that we couldn't have envisaged previously. If we start off, as we all do, with one human genome in the fertilized egg and we end up with these hundred million million genomes, each of those is now a little bit different because they themselves acquire mutations in their genome. Now, of course, those mutations that are occurring in the cells of our body throughout a lifetime, most of them make absolutely no difference at all. But very, very occasionally, in one cell, the mutations, by complete chance, fall in a set of genes that causes that cell to stop behaving as a normal cell to stop observing all the rules of tissues and now to start behaving in that rogue and uncontrolled manner that we know cancer cells do. So in principle, we can imagine that sequencing the full genome of a cancer cell will give us information about what it is in that cell, what genes and therefore what biological pathways have been switched on and off in order to convert that normal cell into a cancer cell. So that was our vision in year 2000, that we would someday be able to sequence the whole cancer genome and then thousands of cancer genomes. And that was why we set up the Cancer Genome Project here at the Sanger Institute. But what we really didn't have was a technology that was fast enough to do the job at scale. So we started with the technologies that were available to us. In fact, the technologies that had sequenced the referenced human genome itself. These, with these, we were able to sequence tens, hundreds, and then a few hundreds of genes in cancers. And with that, we were able to make some discoveries. For example, we discovered mutations in a particular gene that's called BRAF, which um, are in about 70% of malignant melanoma. Now, in 2013, about 10,000 whole cancer genomes have been sequenced by us and others around the world. So what does sequencing cancer genomes bring us? Well, the first thing it brings us is these particular genes, which when mutated, convert a normal cell into a cancer cell. So this gives us huge insights into the biological processes that have to be subverted to convert a normal cell into a cancer cell. And they also give us critical drug targets. So you can imagine that if one of these genes is mutated and that mutation causes the protein that it makes to be switched on, to be stuck in the on position, then you can imagine that perhaps if we could get a drug that would switch that protein off from being stuck in the on position, perhaps the drive to the cell to behave as a cancer cell would go and perhaps the cell would stop behaving as a cancer cell. So this is the good news. What is the not so good news is really twofold. First of all, not every one of these genes that we're discovering can be used as a drug target. And the second thing is that cancers are very devious beasts. So yes, malignant melanomas are sent to sleep when we give them this inhibitor of mutated BRAF, but they find their way around it and within several months there will be a resistant clone of cells that will emerge that will now come back and will ultimately in most cases kill the patient. So how bad is that bad news? Well the fact is that malignant melanoma prior to the discovery of BRAF was a completely intractable disease for which there was no treatment at all. So now we have our foot in the door. The challenge is to push the door wider and wider open. All that we do now is founded upon knowledge. And it's founded upon the knowledge of why cancer cells are cancer cells. And that has to be the profound way forward for us.